Good morning. Today we will be looking at the poem Freedom by Jayanta Mahapatra. Jayanta Mahapatra was born in 1928 in the state of Odisha. He was a lecturer in physics in various co government colleges across Odisha. And he is known as a major poet in Indian English writing and he began publishing through the writer's workshop. He started his career writing, poetry, uh, writing short stories and later on he turned to poetry. And by the age of 43 he had published his first two volumes of poetry. But his profession as a professor in physics uh, did not help him much in his literary pursuit but we see the impact of uh, teaching physics in most of his writings. He seems to be a person much interested in uh, the political issues and the social issues concerning India. Various critiques have talked about Mahapatra's poetry as the product of various tensions because he was a rationalist and at the same time a teacher of physics trying to find his roots in the tradition of the country. Alongside, he was a Christian trying to decipher the meaning of Hindu myths, rites and rituals. His analytical mind often found it difficult to reconcile with the ancestral beliefs and above all being an Indian writing in English all these tensions can be seen reflected in his poetry and the critics say that what emerges from all these tensions is an intensely meditative, introspective and dialectical hyper serious poetry he received many awards for his poetry writing. He was awarded the Sahitya Academy Award in 1981. He was the first Indian English poet to receive that award. He was awarded the Alan Tate Poetry Prize in 2009. In the same year, he was awarded the Padma Shri, one of the um, prestigious awards in India. He was awarded Padma Shri. But in 2015, he returned the Padma Shri as uh, a protest against the rising intolerance in India. His major works include A Reign of Rights, A Father's Hours, Waiting, The False Start, Relationship. He received the award, the Sahitya Academy Award for Relationship. Life Signs, Burden of Waves and Fruit, Whiteness of Bone, Shadow Space, Random Descent. The poetry that is prescribed for study, the poem named as Freedom, is taken from this collection, Random Descent. Let us move into the poetry now. Freedom. At times, as I watch, it seems as though my country's body floats down somewhere on the river. Left alone, I grow into a half-disembodied bamboo, its lower part sunk into itself on the bank. Here, old widows and dying men cherish their freedom, bowing time after time in obstinate prayers while children scream with this desire for freedom to transform the world without even laying hands on it. In my blindness, at times I fear I would wander back to either of them in order for me not to lose face, it is necessary for me to be alone, not to meet the woman and her child in that remote village in the hills, who never had even a little rice for their one, day, one daily meal these 50 years. 
and not to see the uncaught bloodied light of sunsets cling to the tall white columns of Parliament House. In the new temple man has built nearby, the priest is the one who knows freedom, while God hides in the dark like an alien. And each day I keep looking for the light, shadows find excuses to keep. Trying to find the only freedom I know, the freedom of the body when it is alone, the freedom of the silent shale, the moonless call, the beds of streams of the sleeping God. I keep the ashes away, try not to wear them on my forehead. This poem, as you can see, is titled Freedom and it talks about different types of freedom. So it is not simply the freedom that uh, we have in mind. He starts with the reference to uh, the country itself, the country's body floating in the river. And then in the course of time we understand that it has been 50 years since the country got freedom, country got independence from the British rule. And then he moves on to talk about the different types of freedom. So to elaborate on this, he draws upon the Indian belief system about death as freedom from the body, the bondage of the world, from the physical aspect of life. So from the beginning itself, we understand that the setting of the poem is in the banks of a river. It could be the Ganges River in Varanasi because he talks about the country's body floating down the river, which actually refers to the Hindu uh, custom of, the, of floating the ashes of the cremated body in the river. So probably as the poet persona stands there, we, we may imagine that a body is cremated on the banks of the river and its half burnt remains are left in the river to float down somewhere. So these are the hints that tell us that the, uh, the cremation has happened. The river, the reference to the river, the body floating down somewhere. Similarly, towards the end, the ashes, he talks about the ashes which he does not wear on the forehead, he says. Now coming to the poem. In the first stanza, he says, at times as I watch, it seems as though my country's body floats down somewhere on the river. Here, yeah. the reference is to the country, not as an individual, but as a collective whole. Even after claiming to be independent, even after claiming to be free from the British rule, he is apprehensive about the country's movement into the future. He says very casually that the country's body could be seen. It, was, it felt as though the country's body was floating down somewhere. The country is almost dying or it has already dead in spite of the freedom. Moving on to the next stanza, he talks about how he, the poet persona, grows into a disembodied bamboo, a half disembodied bamboo. It is again a very strong, powerful metaphor that he uses here of that of a disembodied bamboo, which means you don't see a real bamboo there, but he himself becomes a bamboo whose lower part is sunk into itself on the bank which means he is standing somewhere in the river and he is either observing or uh, observing the process of floating the ashes into the river or he himself is a part of that action. 
So being there in that river, he feels that he is growing into a, a lifeless bamboo. Seeing the plight of the country, seeing the social conditions, the economic conditions of the country, he feels that he is also part of that and how he is also dying along with this country. From that introduction, he moves into the next stanza where he talks about the old widows and dying men cherish their freedom, bowing time after time in obstinate prayers. So here is where he talks about the first sense of freedom. The old people cherish their freedom, bowing time after time in obstinate prayers. This could be a reference to the old people who are um, about to uh, face death, who are almost um, facing death and having no, no hope left, they keep praying to a God with uh, full dedication to take their souls from their body. So for the old people of the country, freedom is death. While he moves on to the, second, the next stanza, he talks about a different sense of freedom from the perspective of the young people or the children. He says, while children scream with this desire for freedom to transform the world without even laying hands on it. So if the old people are busy preparing themselves for their death, awaiting that kind of freedom, the young people or the children, they desire for a different kind of freedom uh, by transforming the world in which they live. And it is quite ironic here because the, or the poet talks about how they wish to transform the world. He uses this phrase without even laying hands on it. So here could be a reference to this, uh, the uh, imaginary world of the young people and the children and how passionate they are about the freedom and the transformation of their country. And he suggests that there is little action that is put forward by these young people to make that dream come true. And then he moves on to a different knot altogether. He personalizes his feelings and he says, In my blindness at times I fear I would wander back to either of them. In order for me not to lose face, it is necessary for me to be alone. So he finds himself at the crossroads of these two sections of people. Being in his middle age or being in um, his adulthood, he feels that he does not belong to the older generation who are awaiting their death. And he is far away from the younger generation who desire for a different kind of freedom, who wish to transform the entire world without much action put into it. He says that he at times wants to move into either of the section, but he does not want to, fa want to lose face. He does not want to be humiliated and therefore he wishes to be all alone. And then he moves on to talk about the reasons why he wants to be alone, why he feels that the freedom cherished by the old people and the freedom cherished by the young people are, uh, he talks about the reasons why both these kinds of freedom become impossible in the case of India. Here is where he makes a reference that India has been free for almost 50 years because he says that even after these 50 years, there is this woman and child in the village, in the hills, who find it difficult to lead life, who find it difficult to have a proper meal in a day. 
so that is why he says in the previous stanza that he does not want to lose face he does not want to be humiliated because he seeing these kind of poverty in india seeing these kind of the poor conditions of the people in india he cannot wish for a freedom uh, from the body uh, which is death or neither can he wish for the transformation of the world without much action put into it he feels that both these kinds of freedom take away the real sense of freedom and there is still people suffering even after the country has become free uh, for 50 years and then he moves on to talk about the politics in the country he talks about the ruling rulers in the country he says that he does not want to be humiliated he wants to be all alone he does not want to lose face because by seeing these tall white columns of the parliament house which contrasts itself much with the with the condition of the woman and the child in the previous stanza he feels that he cannot stand such a situation that is why he says he does not want to lose face and he wants to be all alone so as we see he starts with one of the hindu customs and then moves on to talk about two different kinds of freedom that the people in india cherish and then talks about the reality the economic reality of india the political reality of india and then in the next stanza he talks about the religious reality in india because he says in the new temple man has built the priest is the only one who knows freedom and god hides in the dark like an alien this is a very powerful imagery he says how the religious leaders have taken the power of freedom have taken the power of god into their hands because the priest is the one who decides what should happen when there is no direct search for the reality of god but god seems to be hiding in the dark god seems to be hiding inside the temple while the priest makes declarations in the name of god and then he again personalizes this and says each day i keep looking for the light shadows find excuses to keep so he wishes to have a little little hopeful situation in such the in in such a grim reality of india he says that he keeps looking for the light but there are shadows which hide the light from coming into his uh, life the light and the shadow are symbolic the light symbolizes the the real sense of freedom that he wishes to achieve and the shadow symbolizes the reality the realities that we spoke about in the beginning the economic reality the political reality the the religious reality these hide the uh, real sense of freedom all these realities hide the real sense of freedom from being put into practice and again in the next stanza he makes it very personal and says that he tries to find the only freedom he knows the body freedom of the body when it is alone so he says being an individual in such a country where the realities are harsh he says that in such a country the only freedom that he can experience is that of his own body and that could again be a reference to the uh, death or the the freedom of the mind when the body is dead and then he uses a few more metaphors the freedom of the silent shale the silent rocks the moonless call the beds of streams of the sleeping god i keep the ashes away try not to wear them on on my forehead so he says that he wishes to experience this kind of freedom the freedom that the rocks experience freedom that the moonless call the uh, experience the freedom that the beds of streams the rivers experience 
these lines could also suggest something else it could also suggest the unconscious mind of the poet he he says that he wishes to experience the freedom of the body and also of the mind and then to conclude the poem he goes back to the initial setting and he says i keep the ashes away try not to bear them on my forehead connecting that do connecting those two lines with the first stanza we can see that uh, the ashes that has been left into the river that has been uh, left a float in the river he says that he does not uh, wear them on the forehead that is he uh, does not want to take up the responsibilities of all those uh, all those grim realities of the country on his forehead he sees them he observes them he understands the uh, difficult situations in india but then he says that he wishes not to wear them on his forehead he wishes not to take them up on his head because that would only leave the person in utter despair so as we see uh we see that the idea of freedom is used as a late motif in the poem late motif is a recurrent idea or a recurrent image that is used continuously in the poem there are a lot of contrasts used in the poem the adjacent stanzas are put in a contrasting way so as to create the effect the poet intends to bring so in the first and second stanzas we find the contrast of the floating image and the half submerged image the contrast between the country and the individual the country's body and the disembodied bamboo so if the country's body is seen as floating in the second stanza he says the individual is half submerged the individual is stagnant which is again a suggestion that the country keeps moving on but the reality in india is stagnant there is no progress happening in india in the third and the fourth stanzas there is again a contrast between the old people and the children the old people who wish to attain freedom through death and the young people the children who wish to attain freedom through transformation and there is a huge contrast in their actions also the old people are seen to be bowing in prayer and the children are seen to be screaming so in the first case in the case of the old people there is a constant uh, self attempt from the self from the person from the individual to attain that freedom whereas in the second one there is no attempt from the self because the author the poet says that the children scream for freedom of transformation without even laying hands on it so that is the contrast you find in the third and the fourth stanzas and then as we said he moves on to present the realities in india the economic uh, political and uh, and religious realities the first one he addresses is that of poverty the woman and the child with no food the second uh, reality is with regard to the politics the hypocrisy in politics and the ruling party and the religious freedom in the uh, in the stanza where he talks about the uh, freedom with with uh, with um, in, in association with religion he says that there's a contrast between the unconcern and the concern that is the priest and god the priest is a representative of the of the human uh, aspect and god is the representative of the divine aspect and uh, from their actions uh, it is again ironic and contrasting because the priest appears in front of the people and the god is said to be hiding in hiding in the a uh, temple room hiding in the dark like an alien so the people the religious people religious leaders who are expected to be concerned about the individuals 
are more selfish they end up in an unconcern and there is again a concern with regard to the status of god the god who hides in the dark and the priest who takes up the freedom the divine freedom of uh, authority the next stanzas show the contrast between blindness light and shadow light is used as a symbol of hope as we said said earlier and there is always this reference to blindness uh, because the author finds himself in a dark stage of a dark state of mind uh, having witnessed these realities in india he feels that he is left in a a uh, blind state of mind he is he lives in blindness because uh, while working for his own good or his family's good he lives blind to the realities of india and similarly that of shadow which we discussed a few moments back the freedom of the body is again reiterated in the state of being alone because he says that he wishes to be alone uh there are four times when he says that he is alone uh in the second stanza he says that he is left alone and then uh towards the middle he says that uh not to face the uh not to lose face he wishes to be alone and then when he talks about the freedom of the body he says uh he has to be alone when he uh for him to experience the freedom of the body so that uh, the state of loneliness uh the state of aloofness uh the state of being insulated from the realities around him becomes important here now as we said the freedom of the silent shale the moonless call beds of streams of sleeping god which is a reference to the river the silently flowing river all these could be references to the unconscious mind because the silent shale the moonless call the beds of um, beds of stream all these uh, are often used as metaphors of the unconscious mind so ultimately he is talking about the freedom of the body and mind as tago says uh, uh he prays for this state of uh, freedom in one of his uh, poems in gitanjali he says that uh, into this haven let my country awake where the mind is without fear and it is free from all the limits of caste and uh, religion around it so into that state of freedom uh, he wishes to arise now as you look uh, at the poem uh, there is a there are a lot of contrasts there are a lot of binaries which you find in the poem which again as we said in the, as we talked about in kamala das's poetry that brings about a balance in the poetry uh, the two stanzas uh, which represent contrast um, adjacently placed stanzas which representing the contrast bring about a balance in the poem and also there are a lot of instances of irony uh, which we already referred uh, before the irony with re- with regard to the idea of freedom and most of the symbols and images that are used here are associated with death and other death like activities uh it is a dark setting that he presents uh he says that he wishes he wishes to look for the light but the shadows refuse to bring about that light uh the realities the grim realities of india refuse to bring about that light so overall it is a dark dark um atmosphere uh that the poem presents and to conclude we can say that mahapatra jayanta mahapatra uh becomes very eloquent when he talks about the realities of india as we said before more than the science more than a science person he is more of a social socially interested person that's why he talks about the realities in india the grim realities in india the uh state of india which is not able to uh come to a considerable level of progress even after 50 years of independence so ultimately he gives us he gives us a glimpse into the different ideas of freedom in this single word uh or the single poem freedom thank you